Next, the next topic that we'll talk on is water. So we're still on the chemistry. Now we'll look at water. Water makes up around 50 to 75 percent of our body weight. Okay, and water has some some, some interesting properties that make it makes it makes it, makes it a vital uh, component of life. So, for example. It's solvency. Many things will dissolve or fall apart in water. Okay, so things that typically dissolve in water are said to be hydrophilic, water loving things. And normally these things are polarized molecules or charged molecules. These things tend to quite easily dissolve in water. And then you have you have molecules that do not dissolve in water. Called we call these your hydrophobic molecules. These molecules tend to be neutral, not charged. Okay. Neutral, what about each of these things? Neutral and also nonpolar. Like your fats, for example. Really do not dissolve in water. Now, when water dissolves things, it does it by forming what's called hydration spheres. So hydration spheres are spheres of water molecules that surround and isolate ions. That way they cannot rejoin each other. For example, let's say you have NaCl in water. NaCl will, will, will separate into Na plus and Cl minus. And then around the Na plus, the water will orient itself like so. H, 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 H. In such a way that the negatively charged oxygens will surround the positively charged sodium ion. And for chloride over here, this ion over here, the water will orient differently, such like this. where now the positive H's will surround the negatively charged Cl minus, okay? And that's how you prevent the Na from reassociating with the Cl minus because they're, they are, they're trapped by spheres of water molecules around them. And that's how you help to dissolve things, okay? Other Properties of water that make it useful for life sustaining things about it. Properties you have it is adhesive. Adhesive adhesion refers to the property that allows for you to cling to things. So water clings to tissue, okay, to membrane. So by having water coating things, it's helpful, you know, to reduce friction between membranes. It's also cohesive. It means it sticks together. It means it, it, it's attracted to itself. Basically by the, the hydrogen bonding, and this is good in terms of providing, you know, thermal stability. You know, temperatures go up based on how fast molecules move. The faster they move, the higher the, higher, the higher the temperature is. And so when you have water molecules being held together by hydrogen bonds, they don't move a lot. So they're, they're quite thermally stable. Okay, so and, and that's, from, that's based on your cohesions. Okay. Cohesive property. 
Water also ionizes. It's ionizable, meaning H2O can break into OH minus ion and H plus ion. Okay, so it's ionizable and it also ionizes things. So NaCl will be ionized by water into Na plus and Cl minus. So it's ionizable and ionizing. And it has a, a, a high heat, heat capacity. Heat capacity refers to the amount of energy required to change the temperature of the solution. So it has high heat capacity. Means it takes a lot of energy to, to change it by one degree Celsius. So here, what happened here, here is that by having a high heat capacity, it means that you can do a lot of things with physically and your blood won't start to boil because the water keeps the temperature stable okay so it's good for body temperature stability and when you happen to get it hot enough it will evaporate so it, it, it can evaporate from the skin when hot and by doing so, it removes the heat from the skin, okay? So it lead, leads to a cooling effect. So when you sweat and evaporate and walk that hot water from the skin, it takes away the heat with the wind to cool you down as well, called evaporative cooling. Okay, that's now, so water is a good solvent, meaning things dissolve in it. So we report the concentration of solutions in a, in a certain way, okay? So concentration of solutions. One common way that's done, especially in, in, in the clinics, is, is what's called percent, percentage. And a percent solution is, is obtained by Dividing the gram amount that you have over a hundred mLs of solution. That is a percent. Grams per hundred mLs. But there's a more useful um, method you, that we use called molarity. Okay. Molarity as a measurement of concentration is, is obtained by dividing the number of moles you have by the number of liter, the, lead, the liter volume of, of your solution. So moles per liter is called molarity. What's a mole? A mole refers numerically to this amount, this amount of things, 6.023 times 10 to 23rd molecules of that thing will make a mole. So for example, one, mole of, say, water is equal to, well, is equal to, to having 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. This amount of water is called one mole of water. And furthermore, one mole of anything weighs the molecular weight in grams. So for example, we know that the molecular weight of glucose is equal to 180 AMU, that is its molecular weight. So therefore, if you were to obtain, to, to, to gather this many molecules of glucose and weigh it, it will weigh 180 grams. So one mole of glucose then will weigh 180 grams. 
So again, if you took this, 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 this many pieces of glucose molecules and weigh it, you get 180 grams. That's what, that's what a mole is, okay? And this number is called your Avogadro number, which really was a breakthrough that allowed for us to, to quantify things, okay? For example, if I asked, if, 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 if I said to you, how many molecules of glucose are in 90 grams? So 90 grams of glucose would contain how many molecules of glucose, right? So, 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 so the way, the way this, this will be done is to say 90 grams of glucose. You want to multiply that set. So each one mole of glucose, right, weighs 180 grams. Just establish that. And so the grams go, so now you're left with, with just moles. And each mole contains 6.023 times 10 to 23 molecules. Okay. And so at the end of this process, you've got 90 goes there, so moles go, not enough with molecules, which is, what, which is what you want. Molecules here. And so moles go, grams go, so now you have 90 there, this becomes two. The answer becomes 3.016 you know, times 10 to the 23rd molecules. That's how many molecules of glucose we'll have in 90 grams of glucose. Okay. All right. So then, so the molarity then is equal to the moles per liter. Let me go one step further on this one. This one you can probably have to practice on your own to, 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 to know how to get these values and, and get them quickly. So if I ask you, what is the molarity then? All right, of a solution containing 90 grams of glucose, right, and 500 ml of solution, okay? So I'll show you one example, okay? So you get 90 grams of glucose here. So you want to first establish how many moles we have. So you know 90 grams of glucose, each mole of glucose weighs 180 grams, right? And here it's dissolved, by the way, in 500 ml of solution. Okay, so, we get, so at the end, we want, we want to get moles per liter. So you, now we have moles per ml, so just go one step further, and you know, you know that we have a thousand mls in one liter, okay? So now grams go, mls go, and you're left with moles per liter. So the answer here will be, again, 90, there comes two, so you can get, this, this, this becomes a thousand together, right? So a thousand and a thousand here ends up being one mole, one mole per liter. What we call one, a one molar solution. So that's the answer. That's the molarity. A one molar solution. If I did all, all, all my math, my math correctly here. Okay. So be able to calculate molarity of solutions. And, and this is important because molarity allows for you then to, to, to properly compare things. So, you know, so a hundred molar solution of say glucose would have the same amount of pieces as a hundred molar sucrose. It doesn't matter what the compound is. What cells care about is how many pieces there are in solution, okay? So, yeah, so 100 to 100 means the same exact, would have the same exact effect on the cell. 100 versus 50 is different. 100 versus 1,000 is different. See? So, so by having molarity, things in molarity, you're able to compare them more easily because you know what exactly you're talking about. If, if for example, you get 100% glucose versus 100% sucrose, that, that, those, these, 
cannot be compared. They're different things because 100% of sucrose is, is 100 grams of sucrose, which weighs more than 100 grams of, of glucose, okay? Which, so this, 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 would give, this would give you less moles, less pieces actually. Okay, so you would want to compare mold, molarity, molarity to molarity versus percent to percent. These don't mean the same thing. Okay, so that's why we use molarity as a way for calculating your solutions. Okay, let's pause there. Let's pause.